Hey guys, thanks for joining us for our webinar here to talk about reverse mortgages. And as I told Glenn earlier, I have the smartest guy I know on the line with us on this video to talk about reverse mortgages. That's Glenn Smart, who is the Vice President of Bay Equity Reverse Mortgages. You may have seen him before in some of our videos. We've chatted with him before. Thanks for joining us again, Glenn. We appreciate it very much. Always a pleasure. Thank you. So today, guys, we're going to focus on the basics of reverse mortgages because we could draw this out for a long time. And Glenn has a presentation. He's going to show you some basics about reverse mortgages. Thanks, Glenn. Let's just take it away. My pleasure. I'm going to jump in and share a PowerPoint presentation, not because I want you to read it off the screen, but uh, sometimes it's helpful to follow along and I'll kind of narrow uh, narrate how reverse mortgages are work. So and we want to talk about what everybody should know about lending for senior home buyers. And I'm gonna to talk to you about reverse mortgage programs uh, as we go through today. And as, as John mentioned, always open to questions. But we'll start with the basis, what's a reverse mortgage? And there are a lot of myths about reverse mortgages. People think it's some exotic type thing. Simply stated, a reverse mortgage is a home loan. That's all it is. This loan allows the senior or seniors to access a portion of the equity in their house. So if they're refinancing, they can, they can take equity from their home they will pay off any existing liens against the house. So we're going to eliminate their current monthly mortgage payment. All right, the senior will continue like any other loan, they'll continue to own the house as their primary residence. So they are responsible for paying their property taxes and insurance, but they can use the money to pay off the mortgage and any additional monies can be used any way that they want, okay? The reverse mortgage is going to continue as long as at least one borrower lives in the house as their primary residence. So if I have two individuals and one, say, passes away, it'll continue for the other person without a change. Uh, they must live in the house as their primary residence, pay taxes and insurance, and keep the house in good repair, just like they would with any other type of mortgages. Many people don't know that you can also use a reverse mortgage to buy a new primary residence. So that might be something we touch on today, using a reverse mortgage to buy a new primary residence. Whether you want to, to downsize or right size your current home, or as many seniors do, about half, they wanna buy a larger home. And we can increase the buying power combined with their down payment and reverse mortgage, they can buy more of a home, okay? The programs that we're gonna talk about, there are two distinct programs. There is the home equity conversion mortgage. Home Equity Conversion Mortgage, or HECM. That is how the Department of Housing and Urban Development says reverse mortgage. So if you ever see HECM or HECM, that is simply a HUD-insured reverse mortgage program. But there's also a proprietary or private reverse mortgage, and we offer both. For the HECM program, everybody on the loan must be 62. Everybody's gotta be 62. For the private or proprietary program, it varies based on state. And that program is not available in all states. Uh, it is 55 in many states. It is 60 in the state of Washington. So I wanted to highlight that for our conversation today. With all reverse mortgages, the older you are, the more money you get. The older you are, the more money you get. Why would that be? Well, you're probably thinking it. You're not going to hold the loan as long. <laughs> right, so you're given more money up front. Uh, for that reason, we really want to know somebody's date of birth uh, because we also round up their age. If they're within six months of their birthday, we round up. And again, the older they are, the more money they get. The specific amount that, that is available is based on the age of the younger person, the value of the home, something called the maximum claim amount, which is a fancy way of saying HUD has a limit. As to what I can use for the value, and to a certain extent, the, the program they choose. Both the HUD insured reverse mortgage program and the proprietary loan do not require that seniors ever make a monthly mortgage payment. That's right, you can take the reverse mortgage and never have a required monthly mortgage payment. You will be, again, responsible for paying taxes and insurance. So if you take the reverse mortgage and you're like most people and you don't make a payment, what's happening to the interest on the loan? It's being added back to the balance over time. If you want to make a payment, you're welcome to, but again, most don't. So the interest will accrue over time. 
And let's show you what that might look like. If we had somebody who had a house that was worth $800,000, and based on the age of the youngest borrower, that property value, and a factor called the expected rate. That's just a factor that's unique to reverse mortgage. It changes every single week. Typically, it changes on Tuesdays. Uh, it That factor will help us determine how much money is available. Because that expected rate is changing weekly, I need you to know that these numbers can move over time. There are times that people might get more money and times that they might get less, depending on what that rate is doing. But let's just assume that based on the $800,000 value, the age and the expected rate, we are able to loan $350,000 using a reverse mortgage. We're going to give that money and over time, pardon me, <clears throat> pardon me, over time that balance is going to be increasing because they're not making payments. Hopefully the appraised value of the home is going up as well. So Glenn, can I interject with a question here that I get asked Please. occasionally? Yeah. So the interest is accruing on top of the principal balance. Yeah. Does the interest that accrues get charged interest as well? It does, it does. It becomes part of the balance, so it's growing over time. There you go. So. The loan's going to continue as long as at least one borrower lives in the house. So if, if somebody passes away, the loan will continue for the other person without a change. It's when my last borrower no longer lives in the house that the loan's going to come due and payable. And let's say this has happened at that point in time. So we're down the road, that $800,000 house, perhaps it's now worth $900,000. But that $350,000 balance grew. And perhaps that's now a half a million dollars and our senior has passed away, what happens to the house? Well, it goes to their estate, just like it would if they had any other loan. If John closes a traditional mortgage and the borrower passes away, he doesn't have the house, it's not his. The house goes to their estate and the mortgage comes due and payable. That's exactly what happens with a reverse mortgage. So in this instance, is the, the estate's gonna inherit a $900,000 house, on which $500,000 is owed. And they're gonna do one of two things. They're gonna call John to refinance that half million dollar balance. He'd be, happy, he'd be happy to help them do that any day. Or more than likely what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell that house for $900,000. They're gonna pay off the half million dollars and they're gonna keep the $400,000 in equity. It's theirs, okay? But what happens if? What if they hold it a long period of time and that $350,000 balance grew to $800,000? But perhaps the value of the house dropped to $600,000. The house would still go to the estate, but now the house is upside down and the estate's going to say, no, thank you. And most likely what they're going to do at that point is simply send the keys back. And the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, will pay off the entirety of the loan plus the balance on the HUD insured program. They'll pay off every last nickel. On that private reverse mortgage, the documentation states that it's a non-recourse loan, which means that the lender can only take the, the, the property as collateral, nothing more would be owed, okay? In my example, I have the senior passing away. Let's just say that they reach a point when they can't stand the house any longer. If there's equity in the house, they can refinance it or sell it. If it's upside down, they can send the keys back and HUD will pay off the entirety of the loan plus the balance. Questions, thoughts, concerns about that program? Any questions? Some of the, some of the properties that, that are eligible, we have single family residences that are available, but also duplexes, triplexes, and fourplexes. Think about that for a second. You have a senior who lives in a fourplex. They rent out three of the units for income and they have no required monthly mortgage payment on any of it. It's a way to have your housing needs met and have an income as well from, from the property. Planned unit developments and townhouses and condominiums are allowed. If it's a condominium, it has to be on HUD's approved list. HUD maintains a list of, of approved condominiums. If it's not on that list, but it would otherwise meet HUD's requirements. We can do uh, what's called a single unit approval. A lender can review it and say, yes, this would meet HUD's guidelines and allow the loan to close. 
The proprietary loans also have requirements with regard to condominiums, but they're a little bit more lax than what you'll find for uh, the HUD insured program. And though for those in the industry, they will more closely follow Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's guidelines. So there are all sorts of options there. But manufactured homes are also allowed. We require that the house be constructed after 1976. It, it never had been moved and wheels and axles ha have been removed from the home and it's permanently affixed. The same guidelines you'd, you'd find for an FHA loan, you'll find for manufactured housing. And, and that's certainly a program available. But as I mentioned, you can also use the program to buy a home. And you've already seen how that might work. It would look something like this. You want to buy an $800,000 house? And based on that sales price and your age and the expected rate, perhaps we could loan you $350,000 using the reverse mortgage. You would simply bring in the difference. You'd bring in the $450,000 in cash. And you say, well, that's a large down payment. And it is. But this works very well for that person that's sold their home and they realized $450,000 in the sale and they don't want a monthly mortgage payment going forward, or maybe don't qualify for a monthly mortgage payment going forward. They now have the ability to buy that $800,000 house for that same cash investment and have no required monthly mortgage payment going forward. If people realize more cash and just don't wanna put it all down, it's a great way to buy the house that they wanted and keep some cash on the side as well. <laughs> all right, I, I wanna share no with question. you that there are a lot there are misconceptions about the program and we'll talk more about those misconceptions in in some some later uh, presentations as well but the biggest misconception is that reverse mortgages are only for people who are poor that yeah. you have to need the loan we have high net worth individuals that use the reverse mortgage program because you can take the money a number of ways after we pay off the existing loan the remainder of the money that's available can be paid as a, as a monthly disbursement. And that might even be a guaranteed amount for life. It might be available in a line of credit. So you just draw the money when you want it. And the beautiful thing about that is you don't accrue interest until you borrow the money. So it's available in case you need it. When you want the money, it's in your account within five days. Oh, by the way, the money that's available on your line of credit, if you don't use it, it grows in value. You'll be able to borrow more later because you didn't take the money early. OK, so you can have cash, the line of credit, monthly payment or blend those choices. And most people do blend the choices. They want to take some cash and leave some in a line of credit or throw in a monthly payment option. And, and we can absolutely customize it to fit their goals. OK, so there's a lot of flexibility there. The high net worth folks who have their money in the stock market that is forever changing, boy, you don't want to sell your the money that you have invested when the market's down. So when that's the case, you use the reverse mortgage line of credit, pay your bills that way. And when the market's going the other way, you can absolutely not use the reverse mortgage. You could pay it back if you wanted to and stop recurring interest, but it just gives a lot of flexibility as to how you take the money. There are folks that use the reverse mortgage, the income from the reverse mortgage, so that they can defer the start date of their Social Security. By the way, if you start drawing Social Security at 62, you get a lower amount. Does anybody Probably know good. how much it increases per year if you wait to take it? It's 8%. So if you want to maximize your Social Security, don't start taking it at 62, wait, and you're picking up an 8% per year gain over time. Absolutely. What we didn't tell you is how do you pay your bills between that, that age of 62 and the maximum age of 70? One of the ways is to use the reverse mortgage and you can set it up to give you payments for eight years. And at the end of eight years, you stop receiving the money from the reverse, but you now start getting the higher social security amount. So it has a lot of moving parts that make uh, complete sense for any financial plan. Okay. I can tell you that uh, there are different folks that, that use reverse mortgages for different reasons. Uh, I like to tell the story of my father who, back when we closed on his reverse mortgage 17 years ago, there wasn't quite enough money available on the reverse mortgage to pay off his existing loan. 
So instead of getting money on the mortgage, he had to bring in cash to close. He brought in about $6,000 and wasn't happy about it. Made sure I knew that every single day. Okay. <laughs> but after not making mortgage payments for a while, he had saved more than $6,000. And now my advice was very sound. He's loved it. He hasn't made a mortgage payment in 17 years. Now, whether his house is upside, upside down or not is you know debatable. But if I were concerned about that, I'm his estate. If it is upside down, I don't have to mess with that. I can simply send the keys back. If at the time when he, when he passes, there's equity, that equity is mine. But in all cases, every monthly payment he's not sent in for 17 years will be what I inherit, if that were my concern. For me, the biggest issue is I haven't had to write a check to subsidize his retirement in 17 years. So he's been entirely financially self-sufficient. And that's a, a fantastic tool that enables families to help out uh, aging uh, relatives as well. Okay. Absolutely. So Glenn, so, are there any limitations on the use of the cash for the senior if they do a refinance and have a chunk of change? So the, the only limitation is, is that they can't take the money and somehow invest it with Bay Equity. We don't do that anyway. Um, we do question whether or not they're going to buy an annuity with the program. Uh, we really are not encouraging folks to take money out and invest it. Uh, most financial planners won't allow you to do that anyway. They won't allow you to borrow from your primary residence to invest. Uh, but we're interested in whether somebody's trying to bundle and say, buy my annuity by getting a reverse mortgage to right. do that. So we're always watching for the uses of the funds. And we do encourage folks not to just take all the money if they don't need it. Leave it in that line of credit and draw it over time. There are many advantages to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's back, as I said, HUD insures that as well. So if you're getting a monthly payment or if you have access to a line of credit uh, and anything should ever happen to the loan servicing company, HUD will step in and continue making those funds available. Good, now let's talk a little bit about the costs for the reverse mortgage. Sure. Can you just yep. define those a little bit, please? Yep, those costs will vary depending upon which reverse mortgage, and they can vary by quite a bit. Uh, the HUD insured program has government insuring costs built in. Now, the out-of-pocket expenses are very low. It's the cost of the appraisal and, and a counseling step, very small. But if we're doing the HUD insured program, HUD charges a mortgage insurance premium. In fact, they charge two of those, just like they do on traditional FHA loans. And those are based on the property value. For that reason, there can be a little bit more upfront cost with the HUD insured program than there is for that private loan. That's one of the knocks about reverse mortgages. They're expensive. John, I'll tell you that they're expensive if you, if you hold the loan for a short period of time. Right. Life can happen. Things can change. But we don't want somebody to take the reverse mortgage and say, I'm going to try this for six months and then I'll move. It's the wrong program to have because of that upfront cost. Any loan is expensive if you hold it for a short period of time. We use a set of disclosures that's, that shows somebody the cost of loan over time. In traditional forward mortgages, you, you guys use a truth lending type document that does that, but it's based on the term of the loan. On a reverse mortgage, there's no end date. It's the life expectancy. So we show it from day one and show you the longer you hold it, what it looks like over time. And it is quite cost efficient as part of the plan. Yeah, it certainly is. Guys, I want you to know that if you uh, want to apply for a reverse mortgage, you're not going to talk to Glenn, the smartest guy I know in the reverse mortgage industry, but I probably will. And actually, you can. What uh, Typically, so the origination happens with us in our office, and we originate reverse mortgages in, in multiple of states. So as long as we're licensed there, we can do the loan there for you. And Glenn is available and his team, and that's all they do is reverse mortgages. So he's really good at it. He knows the ins and outs. He knows how to answer questions in a manner sometimes that I'm not as good at. So if needed, we'll put Glenn on the phone or maybe on a call, a video call such as this one, and we'll chat with him directly so you, you, you can talk to him. He's available like that for us, which has really been a benefit for me. I've really enjoyed getting to know Glenn, and he's been helpful a lot with reverse mortgages with us. I can tell you that this loan, like any other loan that we do, and we do a variety of loans. We do forward mortgages like Glenn talked about, and we do loan mortgages for people who don't qualify in the normal manner and so on. The reverse mortgage is just like them. It's not for everybody, even if you qualify for it, but it is for some. 
And I have had seniors at the closing table, they were crying and they were tears of joy because the reverse mortgage effectively changed their style of life just immediately. They didn't have any mortgage payment. They were able to access cash from their home, which freed up some other debt they may have wanted to pay down. And they're able to do things with their life that they were not able to do prior to that because they had a payment on the loan that they had to maintain and it just hit their cash flow in such a way they weren't able to do take the vacation or maybe take the cruise or something. So it's a great loan for the right person in the right situation. We're going to educate you to it so that you can make an informed decision so you know it's right for you. It's not a sales job here, I assure you of that. And sometimes I may even suggest that it may not be the best loan for you. Um, we're going to do more of these guys. We're going to do some more on myths um, on reverse mortgages. And thanks for attending, guys. Thanks, Glenn. We appreciate it very much. Thank you all. All right. Bye-bye.